and welcome this is Jennifer Miner and today I'll be sharing with you the creation of a koma or Japanese ornament. Our supplies are cereal box, masking tape, floss, scissors, ruler, glue, beads and beading supplies. Um, so this is an image of the ornament that we'll be making today and um, let's get started. So I am using a just a leftover cereal box so I've drawn a rectangle that is six inches by two and then divided that up into two inch squares and now I am drawing um, diagonal lines through my two inch square boxes and you can kind of see the pattern there or you can see the pattern there and my next step will be to cut out my rectangle and you can see that there and now I'm going to score along all of the lines I'm using a metal ruler with a cork back and then um, for this time I'm using a box cutter but you could use an exacto or whatever you're comfortable with and just a reminder be very very careful when um, working with sharp tools I go fairly light on this so that I don't cut through my cardboard because it's fairly thin so I go over it kind of a couple times and again this is my preferred ruler for any sort of scoring since it's metal I'm not worried about cutting into a plastic ruler which I've done before <laughs> so and just scoring my diagonal lines now each of these folds is going to be folded away from you and you want to make those score lines as crisp as possible and as accurate as possible it just helps in the overall um, creation of your ornament so there you can see I am folding those back and one more light score along that last fold and now I'm going to start assembling my ornament so I'm going to just use basic masking tape to bring my sides together so that's how it'll look right there you could probably hot glue this but I find that masking tape works just fine so I get a large strip, tear it cup into a couple of smaller pieces so it's easier to work with. And I'm actually going to just um, fold kind of half of the ornament first since I'll be creating a hang tag for it or a hanger. So just line those up and then I'm going to do one more tape. So this is where I'm stopping. So you can see I've left one corner open and that's to add this hanger. So I've created just, um, again, out of embroidery floss for that matches the colors of my ornaments. You could use really whatever you wanted to. I've used um, ribbon or um, cording and just a healthy dab of glue. And then back to my masking tape to seal it up. Now, um, you won't see this in the video, but I did let this um, set aside just to dry so that I don't accidentally pull my um, hanger out. And it is kind of important for your overall construction just to kind of make sure that all of your edges come together as much as possible you are going to cover this whole entire structure with embroidery floss so a little bit of smut uh, you know not exactly accurate is fine but as close as possible so I'm using my Aline's tacky glue just getting a little start there and I do for the very top I put a little bit of glue around my hanger and just laying down my uh, main color and then I'm going to go around these points and if you ever made a God's Eye when you were a kid this is really similar so I'm just wrapping around my points and I'm going to continue this process until the entire ornament is covered in embroidery floss for this particular um, style, kind of um, inspired by the Hogwarts schools, I'm doing a pattern of six in the main color rows, and then two in my accent, four in the main, and then two in the accent, and repeating that pattern until I get to the end. Here is the color change. So just gluing down this whole top half will be covered so I um, feel comfortable leaving kind of those looking not super tidy because again I'm going to cover them all up with lots and lots of wrapping 
And for these ornaments, I made four of them each in the house colors uh, for Hogwarts. I used about three skeins of embroidery floss for these. Um, and that does include the floss that I used for the tassels. So I had just a tiny bit left of each. So two in the main color and one in my accent color. And now I'll really step aside so you can just watch the process. Okay, so here you can see we are nearing the end of all of our wrapping. And um, I do typically put just a tiny little drop of glue on the um, three little points that I'm working uh, to finishing there. And just to kind of keep everything in place. So now we'll be making the tassels. And I just have a um, two inch tall piece of cardstock that I had kind of lying around. So I'm gonna make a slightly fatter a tassel using the main color and I'm going to wrap that around about 16 times and then just cut a small little piece to tie um, through the top and I when I do the beading I'm going to cut off that top piece but for now it just kind of helps keep everything organized and then I'm going to slide my tassel off and for this particular tassel, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, that contrasting secondary color for kind of the neck wrap on there. For my fatter tassels, I went around between four and five times. For the um, smaller tassels that I use on the end points, it was more like three or four. And then I'm going to tie that off. And then I uh, just do one tiny little dot of glue just to kind of help that hold. And then I'm going to cut and then trim up the bottom piece of the tassel there. And then I repeated this process, um, making three silver tassels with blue necks, and you can see one there. And so I'm going to start beading this one. So I'm just threading kind of a fat be uh, beading needle through the head of the tassel, cutting off that piece that I had um, mentioned earlier that I was going to. And you don't have to do that. That's just kind of what I feel like works best for me. So I um, am going to thread that needle and beading thread back through the head there a couple of times just till I feel like it's secure. And then once I've got that kind of all um, tied together and ready to go, I'm going to start adding some beads. So this is a totally optional step with the coma. I've made a few without tassels and without beading, but I just really love how they look. So I'm using 
uh, four different beads here the blue and kind of aurora borealis bicone um, and these are both check beads that i just purchased at my local store and then the aurora borealis also had um, a smaller kind of a seed bead not a super tiny one uh, but i used that at the beginning and at the end and then between each of my bicones i am adding a very teeny tiny seed beads and clear they're kind of hard to see but they're there so I repeated this uh, beading process on all four tassels. The bottom tassel is the longest and they did about 13 of the large beads on that. And then the um, corner pieces I did somewhere more in the range of uh, four, four or five large beads. And once I've got my beading done, I'm gonna go ahead and um, run that needle and thread through the actual cardboard you can run it just through the floss but i feel like it's definitely more secure going through the cardboard so once i've got that um, through then i'm going to go ahead and thread that back so this is why i use a fairly thick beading needle versus a really thin one um, i need to be able to get through that cardboard so that means that i can't run that needle back through all of those really tiny seed beads so i just kind of go through the first couple of beads kind of depending on the pattern and just tie that back around my bead thread and then cut it pretty close and you you will want to be careful when you do that because it is really easy to accidentally cut your thread and end up with beads um, everywhere so that process i just repeated for the three top corners and then that's it this is our finished product here with the beading um, these are the other three tassel or comas that i made kind of in the Harry Potter style for each of the four houses. So I hope you enjoyed this. I've got a, um, additional instructions on my website at jenniferminer.com. And thank you so very much for watching. Have a great day.